This is Launching Your Daughter Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here is today's episode. Episode 45. Well, welcome, everybody. My guest today is Latasha Hudson. She is the Vice President of Development and Public Relations for Girls, Inc. here in Indianapolis, Indiana. She has been the Director of Programs for five years, and she has the most direct experience within their organization, which is local here. She has a passion for serving our girls in our community, and I'm so excited to have you on today, Latasha. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Nicole, for for having me on. So I would love it if you could tell our listeners just a little bit more about what is Girls, Inc. And I know our local chapter is a little bit different than the national organization. Could you kind of tell us a little more about you and the differences between the two different groups? Well, the mission of Girls, Inc. is to inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And we have nearly 83 affiliates throughout the country, including Canada. Wow. And they all and they all provide programs differently. So majority of the Girls Inc. affiliates provide girls clubs where the girls actually go to the centers and participate in programs, activities and sports. And then there are affiliates like Girls Inc. of Greater Indianapolis in which we actually provide program outreach. So we go to the girls. The difference is, is that many of the affiliates that provide program outreach They service a larger community. So, for example, for greater Indianapolis, we serve four counties in Indianapolis. We would have to have more than 10 clubs to serve over 100,000 school age girls. (laughs) That would be be very cost effective. (laughs) Exactly. And so we found uh, more benefit in actually going where the girls are. So we provide programs at schools, community centers, boys and girls clubs. So we remove the transportation barrier. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to be more cost effective and more girls to participate in our programs. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I know when things are kind of spread out wherever geographically people are located, that yeah, cost effective wise, it's like you're trying to to reach as many girls and families as you can. And to try and have so many different clubs started up, it would be like, yeah, it just wouldn't be, like you said, cost effective to be able to do that. Right. So what are some of the, I guess, the programs or the skills that you're teaching when you do these um, programs uh, locally? What are some of the things that you do when you're doing the outreach piece of it? Well, we provide hands-on programs. So that means that the girls are pretty interactive in our activities. We're teaching them tools and resources to navigate the challenges they're facing today, like self-esteem, self-confidence, bullying, Um, negative messages that they may hear or they may see as technology and, you know, the media has played a huge role in in impacting some of our girls' self-esteem and their self-confidence. Yeah, it absolutely has. I know um, in various podcast episodes, we've talked about some of the bullying and there's a guest that I'm going to have back that we're going to talk just about cyberbullying. So yeah, it definitely can impact them. So tell me, tell us a little more then, what is the age group that you all typically deal with? What's kind of the youngest and then what's the typical oldest? We, we work with girls ages 6 to 18. Okay. So we majority of the time start with girls in first or second grade. Oh, excellent. Okay. As we know, you know, as they're transitioning from the daycare to the school atmosphere, there's a lot of things taking place. Um, And then we have grouped the girls into four age groups, six to eight, nine to 11, 12 to 14 and 15 to 18, which allows us to meet girls where they are cognitively, developmentally, emotionally, as well as socially. So that way we can address the challenges by age group as opposed to grouping all the girls together because we know they're dealing with different things at different ages. Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad you said that too, just for the parents out there listening. It, it totally makes sense developmentally, just where their brains are at and what they're they're facing on a daily basis. It is different. So thank you for, for saying that. And how then do the parents get involved? If you're sometimes at the school settings or you're doing things that are more 
I guess, centralized where the girls are at. How is it that parents can get involved to be more involved and to maybe even learn some of the skills you're teaching their daughters? Well, our parents can actually visit our website. Um, and I know you're going to provide this information, but it's www.girlsincindy.org. And they can see if we're providing programs at a location near them. The girls would have to be registered mm -hmm. to attend Girls Inc. at the school. Okay. In addition, um, for Girls Inc. Day, they can come to Girls Inc. Day or summer camp. And they do not have to be registered with the school. So parents can register for those events without, you know, having to worry about them being affiliated some other way with Girls Inc. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit, because I know I jumped in and, t and shared Girls Inc. Day. Girls Inc. Day is our focus on STEM, science, oh, technology, yes? engineering, and math. Okay. And so we provide two opportunities a year for girls ages nine and up to participate with us. And they focus solely on STEM. Sweet. Tell me just a little bit more, because I don't know if all of our, all my listeners really know exactly about the science and engineering piece of it. And I know STEM, where what I do, it's, it's talked about quite often with, with families and things. So why is that so important? Well, as we know, when girls reach the, reach the age of nine, they are really not focused on science and math the way they used to be because they're worried about what other people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And so we've found that our focus on STEM helps girls to kind of navigate any challenges or negative thinking they may hear from other adults about whether or not they can pursue those type of careers. Mm -hmm. And so we focus and put emphasis on STEM to make sure we encourage girls to continue pursuing whatever career interest they may have. That may not be one of those careers that you would normally see a girl, you know, applying themselves in. And I think that's so important that we do need females within these different fields because they absolutely have the skills. I mean, it's like with anything that we learn, if, if it's not our strong suit, we can actually learn how to get better, whether it's within science or it's within math. And it's no different between boys and girls and how they they can apply that. It's just being able, like you're saying, is having the confidence to keep moving forward. So if they love math, to keep going forward in that field and not let any other, yeah, whether it's negativity or uh, limited thinking, stop them from going towards that career. Absolutely. And we want to encourage all girls. So we usually um, partner with universities such as IU and Purdue to provide um, STEM related activities as they're the experts. We've partnered with the Purdue um, Women of Engineers. Um, we per partnered with the College of Agriculture. Um, and we've also worked with um, IU School of Informatics. So that way girls have an opportunity kind to explore more opportunities in STEM. So that way they can see how, you know, their interests could actually formulate into something much bigger and how it can also help the community. Yeah, I love that. And for just for those of you who are not located here in Indiana, IU is actually Indiana University. And it's one of our Big Ten schools. And then Purdue University is also one of our Big Ten here. So it's great to have these different universities promoting our young women to go into these fields. And I love how you all have partnered up to build upon that, because those are yeah, those organizations are really good as well. Well, great. And how do parents get involved during that day as well? Or is it truly just for the girls to be involved? We found that it's best just for the girls to be involved okay. with the activity. Sometimes, even though our parents would love to participate, as I <laughs> learn things when I go to these different events as well, um, sometimes it may not allow them to really think as far as they want to think. Mm -hmm. And so it gives them the opportunity to kind of navigate those things that they may face and kind of be able to explore tools and resources to answer questions that, you know, it's easy to go to a parent and ask them, well, mom, how would you do this? Or um, even in many situations, guardians, auntie, how would you do this? If the parent and guardian is not there, then the girls will rely on each other to kind of answer the questions and resolve issues that they may be facing with the events and the activities. That makes total sense. I love it. How can parents then, especially just again, if we stick more with the, the science, technology and, and engineering and math, how can parents really continue to support their daughters or what are things that they can do to help? maintain that interest in those fields if that's where their daughters are want to go? 
Well, I think just like our Girls Inc. mission is to impact, inspire girls to be strong, smart, and bold, I think parents and guardians can empower the girls as well. We have some Girls Inc. guides located on our website. Um, it's under our programs for girls, and we call them girl resources. Mm-hmm. And they provide like talking points, research, and other information for parents to encourage encourage their girls to support them, to help build up their self-esteem and their self-confidence, to get girls to think critically about some of the research that we've identified, as well as how to empower them to overcome some of the things that they may see or read about. Oh, I love that. And again, yes, you're right. I'll have these on the show notes for parents and, and guardians to be able to go out and click on those links and find the resources that you're talking about. I love it. Well, I know I kind of sidetracked you because I was like, oh, that's great. You guys have a STEM day. I love it. <laughs> what are some of the other programs that you were you were getting ready to talk about? And then I kind of cut you off. What are some of the other things you offer? For Girls of Greater Annapolis, some of the parents can actually get the girls involved in summer camp. We provide a four-week camp that actually aligns to our mission of being strong, smart, and bold. So we have a strong week that focuses on healthy relationships managing anger or hurt feelings, um, nutrition, physical health. And then we have a smart week that's focused on college and career planning. Um, Some of the STEM activities that we've kind of talked about briefly, we focus on STEM. We have a bold week in which we focus on positive messaging, self-esteem, self-confidence, and dealing with peer pressure. And then the final week is inspired in which we partner with quite a few um, organizations in Indianapolis to provide expression programs such as art, some science is involved. Uh, We do anything that's probably good for the girls to kind of use creativity. Mm -hmm. So we have we've had poetry classes. We've had different things that week. That's awesome. Because yes, it works on the different side of the brain as well and keep making sure they're more balanced between the left side, which is more the the logical, the scientific piece of it can come from that and the math skills. And then on the right side, they can do the creative piece. So I love that. I'm curious if we can go back a little bit. So that's what our local chapter does, what you all do here in Indianapolis. So for the if for Listeners who are not located here in Indiana or in the Indianapolis area, how can they then get involved or find out more about the Girls, Inc., which is at the national level? How can they find out more about that? They can find locations near them via the Girls, Inc. national website, which is www.girlsinc.org. And I'm sure you'll provide that, too, Mm -hmm. at the end of the podcast Mm -hmm. for the listeners. And they can find a Girls, Inc. affiliate near them. Okay, excellent. excellent. And unfortunately, if there's not a Girls Inc. affiliate near them, um, they would not be able to get their girls involved. However, they can use the tip resource sheets um, on Girls Inc. National's website or the Girls Inc. guides on our Girls Inc. Indie website. Okay. So no matter what, yeah, if they don't have something close to them, they're still the resources are still available regarding the handouts exactly. and things. Good, good. Yes. Yep. Because I know most of the parents that I work with, especially the moms, they see sometimes their daughters really struggling with whether we talked about, you know, the peer pressure or the bullying that happens, and they so want to be able to protect. And it's like, well, you can't be with your daughters 24 seven. So it's really building the skills. So their daughters feel more empowered and more confident and can be assertive and setting good boundaries with with um, people, whether it's at school or in work environments, and giving them those skills. So I love what you guys provide and really trying to help support the parents and caregivers as well. Yes, thank you. So I'm curious, is there anything that really stands out for when you are working with the, the girls, whether it's with the different camps or the different outreach programs, or even with the parents and caregivers? Is there Any, like, I guess, piece of advice, books, anything like that, that whether you or other team leaders, do they do you provide for them or recommend to them? Well, there's a lot of resources for girls that's out on the Internet right now that we utilize. Um, One of them is the Dove Self-Esteem Project. Oh, yes. So they have videos and they have resources for parents as well as girls. So it's kind of like supporting the tip guides that we've already put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good Uh, resource. I forgot about that one. Thank you. The other thing is just role modeling behavior. So we, you know, we encourage parents and guardians to model 
the behavior they want to see. And we encourage girls to be selective about the friends that they choose. That's a tough one for a lot of girls. I know the middle, between middle school and high school, there typically yeah. is a lot of changeover in friendships. And for some some girls, it is really difficult because they don't quite understand why there's such a shift or a change. Uh And it's, you know, it's due to, you know, you're starting to figure out more who you are, you're starting to figure out what works for you, your different values are coming through, your belief systems are coming through. And so those interests can change. And so those relationships can change. But yeah, it's not sticking with the folks that bring you down, put you down, get you into trouble, things like that, that it's okay to say, no, I don't want to go down that, that path. Right. And, you know, I started with Girls Inc. Um, about eight, eight years ago. I've been with the organization as an employee, but I started as a volunteer. Mm-hmm. So I actually led programs for Girls Inc. of Greater Indianapolis on the different activities and subject matter that we've discussed And one of the things that I've learned through working with Girls Inc. is I've learned not to put myself down in front of the girls. I've learned, you know, and I think that's a great piece of advice for parents and guardians as well. They're going to pick up on what we do. So if we if we say negative things about our body Uh and our physical image, then they're going to pick up on that and they're going to say negative things about themselves as well. So we shouldn't expect our daughters to build themselves up if we're constantly tearing, tearing ourselves down. Yes, exactly. And I, and I love how you, that was beautiful rem- reminder because it is us, us adults, parent or not, just if you are in front of those girls, what you say about yourself, they hear it and they do pick it up and they start to file it away. So whether you're joking about it or, you know, just kind of like, ah, you know, I, I ate too much today, so now I need to go on a diet. It's like, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about healthy eating. It's about healthy friendships. It's about putting it in a light where we're all responsible for our own behaviors that we choose and yeah, not putting ourselves down if we make a mistake because that's what it is. It's like, okay, so made a mistake today or I need to go back and kind of modify that behavior a little bit. It's all about learning and practicing doing healthy things versus, oh, I can't do anything different. Exactly. And, and our and our mission, you know, is to not only encourage the girls to be healthy, educated and independent, but we want girls to learn how to think, not necessarily what our thoughts are, but to take the values of the parents and guardians, the information they're receiving from school, the information they're receiving from media and derive their own opinions about that. But they have to be able to navigate that information. So having positive influences, um, having encouragement from their family and their friends and peers will help them to make good decisions. Absolutely. And you hit upon that earlier, too, that you guys help with the critical thinking skills. And I totally agree to be able to take all the information from all the different you know, environmental resources, whether it's like in the home or at school. To, to discern that information and to use their own critical thinking thoughts to be able to say, yeah, this is the path that I want to go down or this choice is best for me versus just kind of going with the flow and not pausing and really evaluating the information that they've been given. So I love that you guys also really reinforce that with them. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, is there anything else that we, you know, didn't touch upon or that I missed that you would like to share with the listeners today about Girls Inc. and the different options that they have to get their daughters involved or to get the support that they're looking for? Well, I encourage all parents and guardians to do their own research, um, whether it's through Girls Inc. or whether it's um, through other organizations um, that say that they are they have a strong interest in girls and the abilities in helping girls navigate some of these challenges. I think just taking all those resources and pulling them together provides parents and guardians with sources of information that you know sometimes can be overwhelming. But I think once you get down to figuring out, okay, what is it that I really want to help navigate or help my girls with, then it's easy to narrow those resources down. And Girls Inc. has done a really good job of addressing every area that could be important to the girls or every area that could be influential on their well-being, you know, for their future and breaking those subject matters down. So I think it's just a great place. And I'm not biased, but I do (laughs) think it's a great place. 
I wish it, uh, you know, it's been around, our Girls Inc. India affiliate has been around since um, 1969. And I didn't get to participate in Girls Inc. as a girl. But now as an adult, I am learning so much from the girls. Mm -hmm. And I just see so much potential in them. Mm -hmm. So I encourage um, parents and guardians to just help girls navigate all these stereotypes and the conflict resolution and and just everything to be able to make positive decisions for their future. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, when we were younger, it it is different. Every, you know, I know sometimes parents are like, well, you know, it was tough when I was a teenager. And it's like, I totally agree. We all have gone through tough times as a tween or a teenager. But as we continue to change, as our world continues to evolve, as technology continues to evolve, it's different for our, our girls now. And it's being, yes. like you said, it's helping them navigate this time of life and giving them the skills that they're needing, but also really pausing and listening to them. And I think that is the biggest thing because we adults can continue to learn from them as they learn Uh from us. So I love what you all offer and how, yeah, it's not only supporting the girls, but their parents and guardians as well of, of saying, you know, you can do it. And here's some resources to be able to help out with this time of life. So Love it. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole, for the time. Appreciate it. On the show notes, I'll have the links to the Girls Inc. Um, Greater Indy area. I also have the the national organization um, website out there as well. And I just want to say thank you so much, Latasha, for taking the time to share with my listeners what is available through both the, the local Girls Inc. and the national level and how you all are really continue to help our communities continue to support the girls, empower the girls and their parents and guardians as well. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Nicole. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Latasha from Girls Inc. here locally in Indianapolis. And I hope there is a program that is near you wherever you live. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe to this podcast through iTunes and or Google Play or Stitcher. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to Launching Your Daughter with Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. For more information or to stay up to date, go to launchingyourdaughter.com. You can sign up for my email list or join my Facebook group. Thank you.